hi everybody uh, now we will start our talking about uh, your syllabus of physics but uh, before starting uh, our journey together through your syllabus about physics I want to let you know that physics isn't like any other subject you are studying physics need from you to pay too much attention to understand the physical re relationship between the quantities this is point number one point number two physics needs from you to practice every day not day by day not study physics one day per week but if you want to be good with physics you need to study physics daily due to physics like language you are using physics to sharpen your mental abilities by practice of course so without practice without practice daily you can't be good with physics so, so before starting your journey I want from you to avoid some points and care of other points to avoid some points number one you need to avoid multi sources don't learn too many ways to deal with physics but learn only one way to deal with it number two avoid learning by heart don't learn the data of physics without understanding it's important for you to understand every piece of information you study with physics number three avoid fear don't fear from physics because physics is a subject which support your mental abilities your mental abilities physics help you to learn how to have a strong personality this is physics so don't fear from it don't afraid from it it's physics number four avoid avoid learning without arrangement for your time it's important to be aware of uh, the location of physics in your daily time don't study physics when you are tired because if you are tired you can't study physics uh, by a suitable way this is point number one what you have to avoid point number two what you need to care of care of uh, repeat the informations with yourself by your own terms this is point number one point number two care of practice every day point number three concentrate very very clear during your studying physics use all your mental abilities to understand each piece of information from your lesson now you are ready to study physics so we will start quickly with chapter one which is called wave motion wave motion before studying wave motion we need to understand what's the meaning of motion and we will analyze the definition of wave so what is the meaning of motion motion means if I told you for example that I have a car was standing at point A after a while this car moved from point A to point B 
then you will decide that this car made a motion so from here what is the meaning of motion try to think what is the meaning of motion by this way this means that if the car changed its location from point A to point B then we will call this process by a motion due to this car has two locations original location and the new one by comparing between the original location which is A and the new location which is B by making this comparison here you will find that this is called a motion but if you made this comparison and you found that the original location is the same new location if both are the same then the car made no motion so the motion here can be defined as it's the change of location of an object we studied many types of motion you have here translational motion and periodic motion we can classify the motion to to this motion translational motion and periodic motion if you want to put a definition for any physical term here you can help yourself by giving an example try to think in an example of uh, translational motion like what like the train motion the train start its motion from Cairo to Alex this is called the translational motion your car started its motion from Tosun to Mamura then Tosun is the starting point and Mamura is the ending point this is called translational motion from here what's translational motion there is another name for this motion which is called transportation motion so this motion it's the motion which has starting point and the ending point and this motion doesn't repeat itself with the time but periodic motion like the motion in circle for example or the motion of the bindle all these types are called the periodic motion so what is the periodic motion this motion like the motion of the moon around the earth or the rotation of the earth around the Sun this motion here doesn't have starting point or ending point there is no starting there is no ending point here but it repeats itself regularly in equal intervals of time this motion can be classified into many types we can classify periodic motion to number one circular motion it's the motion in circle which you studied during the previous year senior one number two the vibrating motion can you think about an example for vibrating motion something move vibrating motion can you think in an example of that vibrating motion you studied in junior four that the motion of the solid molecules is called limited motion this limited motion is vibrating motion this is the vibrating motion like the motion of the solid molecules number three the oscillatory motion like the bundle the bundle and the string and the spring 
all these are considered oscillatory motion and we will study in details why this is called by an oscillatory motion the last motion here is called wave motion so this is what is the meaning of motion and the types of the waves now let us move to discuss the second concept which is wave to understand what is the meaning of the wave imagine with me there is a person standing on the edge of a lake and this person start to throw a stone in water if I asked you try to this to describe to me the properties of the surface of water of the lake before throwing the stone before throwing the stone can you tell me the properties of the surface of the water try to think what is the state of the surface of the water before throwing the stone in it of course the surface of the water is calm it's a calm in this state but after throwing the stone into the water there is something opposite to the calm state there is a disturbance the surface of the water after throwing the stone in it suffer from disturbance this disturbance due to the throwing of the stone here is the question why this disturbance appeared on the surface of the water after quiet thinking you will find that this disturbance because the stone has something this thing transferred from the stone to the molecules of the surface of the water this thing is called the energy this thing is called the energy the energy transferred from a stone to the molecules of the water this during the process of collision between molecules of water and the mo and the molecules of the stone the stone got its energy from your hand you gave the stone its energy during the process of throwing then this disturbance start to move on the surface of the water we call it propagation the disturbance propagates on the surface of the water in the form of uh, number of circles have the same center this center is the point of collision between the stone and the water molecule from geometry I think you can tell me the name of this shape number of circles have the same center this shape is called concentric circles this concentric circles due to the, the shape of the disturbance as look like number of circles have the same center of course the direction of propagation of this disturbance you will notice that it will be in all directions so these circles during its propagation it will carry with it the energy to transfer it in the direction of uh, propagation this is called the wave motion from here of course we can define what's the meaning of uh, wave motion these circles are called of course water wave but before putting a definition for the wave I want to let you know that our analysis for the data here 
about the spreading of wave of waves on the surface of the water we have something in physics which is called reference frame what is the meaning of reference frame reference frame means if we got some analysis some analysis on the data then we got some rules and some laws here these rules you can't use it out of its reference frame what what's the meaning of that this means the rules which control peace of the universe stay there in the same piece we can't take these rules from its environment to another environment what is the meaning of that too this means we can't use the rules which control the spreading of wave on the surface of the water to understand the waves which move in at the depths of the water under the surface there are new rules we have to find it now let us discuss uh, or found or form together what is the meaning of wave here's a wave is the disturbance that propagates and transfer the energy in the direction of propagation this of course will be relating to the time this is the meaning of the wave after that we have many types of the waves and we have many bases depending on it we can classify the waves we can classify the waves to two types mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves here why we call mechanical waves by this name and electromagnetic wave by this name first we will discuss electromagnetic waves after that we will take our time in studying mechanical wave why we will start with electromagnetic waves because electromagnetic waves we will take only some notes about it and you will study this part in details during the next year senior three and four chapters so uh, now we will take some notes about electromagnetic waves number one electromagnetic waves is, co is called by this name this due to it consists of electric field and magnetic field the, uh, for, uh, uh, for example for electromagnetic waves you uh, the light the visible light the sunlight is an example for electromagnetic wave this light its ray consists of two components electric field and magnetic field these two fields are perpendicular on each other so the angle between electric field and the magnetic field equal 90 degree and when we call it perpendicular we will name it transverse wave so why we call all the electromagnetic waves by this name we call it by this name due to the electromagnetic wave has 90 degree between its component so it's called transverse waves this is number two number three the electromagnetic waves like gamma like the gamma at the top blue it we will find ultraviolet ray then the visible light from violet to red and after that infrared then microwave and short radio wave and long radio wave from here this is called the electromagnetic spectrum of light the light consists of 
number of waves not only the visible light there are number of waves here number of waves above the violet and below the red here some important informations you need to understand as we move from violet to red the same are moving from gamma to long radio wave as we moved from violet to red let me ask you this question what do you think the wave length you studied these concepts before the wave length of red longer than or shorter than the violet try to search in your environment for an evidence to tell me the red the red light and the violet light which one of these which one of these have long wave length of course if you watch the lights the back lights of your car the back lights of your car you will figure out it's red why this is red this is for warning the driver behind you this means the driver behind you by seeing the back light which is red can recognize you from a far distance so he can avoid any accident with your back so this means the red light has longer wavelengths than the violet so as we move from violet to red the wavelength will increase by the same way as we move from gamma to long radio wave the wavelength will increase and you know that the relation between lambda and the frequency lambda and the frequency it's inversely proportional then as lambda increase then we then then the wavelength uh, lambda is the wavelength and the wavelength will increase so the frequency new will decrease and if the frequency decrease its energy will decrease too this means gamma has high energy and uh, low wavelengths long radio wave has short has long wavelengths and low energy so again gamma rays have high energy and short wavelengths long radio waves have long wavelengths and weak energy this is called the electromagnetic waves and uh, b the next point the electromagnetic waves like the light what do you think the speed of light can be increased or decreased the the question by another words the speed of light can be accelerated and decelerated what do you think i want from you to know that the speed of light can't be accelerated or decelerated the speed of light has a constant value 3 times 10 to power 8 meter per second this speed is constant can't be accelerated or decelerated the next point what do you think the electromagnetic waves like the light can propagate through vacuum or it can't of course the light which is produced from the surface of the sun can propagate through the vacuum and reach to our surface here on the earth this means the light 
can propagate through the vacuum then the light doesn't need medium to propagate through it doesn't need medium the medium isn't important totally so we can call the electromagnetic waves by non-materialistic waves these waves are non-materialistic waves why these are called non-materialistic due to these waves can propagate through through space so it doesn't need medium medium isn't important at all so it's called non-materialistic waves but before reaching to the surface of the earth the light can propagate through the medium too the, as you see if you looked at the sky you will found that the light propagate through the air this means the light can propagate through the media so of course it's important to know that the medium should be transparent of course to allow the light waves to pass through it so the light as an example of electromagnetic waves is called materialistic wave so from here the wave the light wave the electromagnetic wave is called materialistic and the non-materialistic wave so all these details will help you to understand a full information and a complete image about what is the electromagnetic waves but you will study this part in details during the next year senior three now we want to move to study mechanical wave here as we used to know if you want to understand uh, about something in physics you need to help yourself by giving an example mechanical waves mechanical waves like for example sound in air and uh, I, as I told you before sound in air we hear we are carrying off the reference frame so the rules which we will found here about sound in air we can't use it to understand sound in solid or water so we will study sound in air and we will study water waves on the surface of the water and this is different from the waves under the surface of the water here mechanical waves why these waves are called by this name mechanical waves mechanical waves are called by this name of course the word mechanical means there is a type of motion here what is this motion during the spreading of energy through the molecules of the surface of the water of course moving the energy causes the motion of the molecules of the medium so due to the motion of the molecules of the medium these waves are called mechanical waves these are called mechanical waves due to the motion of the molecules of the waves so these waves as you understood now need medium or doesn't need medium to propagate through of course need medium to propagate through to make it move so this is called the mechanical so the mechanical waves are called materialistic wave and it isn't can't be called non-materialistic wave due to the medium is essential here the medium is very important to be existed to help mechanical waves to propagate from place to another location in this in uh, uh, on the earth's surface for example so 
the mechanical wave need medium so it's called mechanical waves and materialistic wave and of course you know that the speed of sound for example it's 340 meter per second and this speed is very low if you compared it by the speed of light which is 3 times 10 to power 8 meter per second so the speed of mechanical waves is very low by comparing it with the electromagnetic waves this mechanical wave can be compare, can be classified to two types we can classify it to transverse wave and longitudinal wave here what is the difference between if i asked you what is the difference between transverse wave and longitudinal wave of course you know the difference may you studied it before but um, we will study in details this part uh, during our journey but now i want to move to some very important points before comparing between the transverse wave and the longitudinal wave number one i need from you to think about the conditions of mechanical waves to occur the mechanical waves need what to be existed of course number one it needs vibrating source produced from vibrating source like the tuning fork for example tuning fork produce vibrate is considered a vibrating source and it produces sound what else throwing the stone the collision vibrating source and your uh, your and the string the motion of the string of violin for example this motion of the string it is considered vibrating source due to it causes sound what else what else it needs a medium it's important so this medium help to make the mechanical wave to propagate this medium like for example the water wave the water for the water waves uh, like the air for the sound so number two it needs medium to propagate through it the next point source we will discuss together source of vibration source of the vibration like symbol bundle vibrating tuning fork and the vibrating spring and from this point we want to discuss together what's the meaning of uh, this motion which is called oscillatory motion oscillatory motion like like the bindle the bindle was standing for example as you see it uh, in the clock in your clock you will see that uh, the bindle was standing at its original position in the middle then it started to move to the two sides of uh, this original position this motion is called due to this thing oscillatory motion this is called oscillatory due to it has number one original location and its motion is to the two sides of the original position this feature of the motion make this motion called oscillatory motion so oscillatory motion it's the object's motion at which the object move to the two sides of its rest position 
and of course it will repeat itself regularly in equal intervals of time making tone of the oscillating body okay this is the oscillatory motion and now I want to ask you about m another examples for the oscillatory motion Bendel is an example for the oscillatory motion and what else try to think with me yes of course the string is an example the string can be moved to up and down and it has original location in between and the spring the spring can move up to down to the two sides of the original location here we need to discuss together a very important concept which is called complete oscillation complete oscillation of course you know that the pendulum start moving from the midpoint then move to the left and they return again to the midpoint this second time this second time will be at the same location but it will be in the opposite direction this make these two points these two times of passing by the midpoint are called different in phase what is the meaning of different in phase different in phase means these two points have the same location but opposite in direction same location and opposite in direction if the direction is opposite this means that these two points are called different in phase it will complete its motion to right and return quickly to the midpoint again but here this is the third time has the same location of uh, the second and the first time but in the same direction of the first only so the first time and the third time these two times have same location and the same direction so this these two times are called they have the same phase so if the point if the point the object passed by it two times these two times have the same phase same phase again means have the same direction and the same location this means that this object made a complete oscillation so if we want to put a definition for the complete oscillation you will say that it's the motion of the oscillatory object when it passes by a point along its motion twice successively have the same phase if uh, this happened we can say that this object made a complete uh, oscillation uh, here are some very important points I want from you to take care of it Th uh, we have here two locations location number one when the pendulum passes by the midpoint which is called original location and the two points to the left and the right the two points to the left and the right the speed to these two points will decrease so the kinetic energy will decrease of course and as the kinetic energy decrease its height increase so if the height increase this means the potential energy will increase as we moving toward the original location the speed will increase why the speed will increase the speed will increase this due to its motion t 
toward the acceleration of the earth so the speed will increase of course but as the velocity increase the kinetic energy will increase too but the height will decrease and if the height decrease the potential energy will decrease don't forget that there is a relation between potential energy and the kinetic energy but the relation here is inversely proportional what the meaning of that this means that as the kinetic energy increase the potential energy will decrease why due to the part from potential energy which disappeared it appeared as kinetic energy so there is uh, inversely proportional between uh, these two energies but the summation between them is called mechanical energy and the mechanical energy always constant due to its the summation of potential energy and kinetic energy now I want from you to note this point the two points are said to be in the same phase when the points have the same phase when the two points have the same location and the same direction if the two points have the same location and the same direction of motion it will be called by same phase of course at any instant but if we have two points point move toward y axis and the point move toward x axis the positive x axis these two points have the same phase of course not there is a difference between these two points this difference equal 90 degree this difference equal 90 degree another two points if i have two points point move to y axis positive and another point move to y axis negative the difference in phase between these two points of course will be 180 degree if I have another point move from y to y axis and uh, this point move to y axis uh, x axis but it's negative the negative of x axis the difference in phase here will be yes of course this will be more than 180 but less than 360 it will be 270 from here you can understand when you can decide if the two points have the same phase or not now we will complete our discussion about the most important concepts of the wave motion the next title will be amplitude now let us move to discuss this concept together